Hey, everybody. How you doing today? This is our third and final conversation with Anna Kelly on this wonderful Friday. How you doing, Anna? I'm great. Happy Friday. Yeah. So, hey, one of the things that's becoming evident to me, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time helping people understand how to get started one rental at a time, how to learn your market, understand deal flow, all of that. But now that's a year old and it's the momentum is building. It, it really, I can see it cresting. But as I step back and I look at it, there's another element to Olivia and I's success. And I just wanted to talk to you about it, see if, see if I'm missing anything. And that was really understanding, frankly, our budget, uh, understand what we, what we had coming in, where it was all going, what is a want versus a need, and ultimately ratcheting back what we spent, right? We were spending, as we've shared many times, 100% of our income. And ultimately, over the course of several years, got that down to 50%. And that's because we, I mean, I don't know if there's another word because budgeting has a negative connotation and I don't think it should, but you got to understand where you are so you can get where you want to go. So I wanted to ask you about budgeting, how important it was for you and your husband in the beginning and how important it is now to talk about money and you know yeah. all of that stuff. It is so important, Michael. I'm so mm -hmm. glad that you wanted to talk about this because unless you learn to money, master money, money will master you. And, and that's the bottom line. And so budgeting is really just a way to say, instead of me spending, spending, spending on what I think I need and what I want and seeing how much I have left at the end of the month and going, oh my gosh, I don't have enough money for this. Yeah. You say, this is exactly how much money I'm planning to make every month. And yep. this is exactly what I need to reserve and set aside to pay for all the things that I have to pay for. How much money do I have left at the end of that? And then, oh, for that money that I have left, what are my choices for what to do with it? Will I save some? Will I spend some on what I enjoy? Will I spend some for the future, um, you know, and my investing goals? And so really budgeting, I like to think of as just mastering my money. I'm mastering the, the, the control of my money and allocating my money where I've predetermined I should allocate it based on what's important to me, right? Yeah. And it's really important because again, it's not a conversation... I had growing up, I can only see the outcome of not mastering your money, right? Mom was stressed with all that. I remember walking around and seeing the kitchen table, just bill paper everywhere. I assumed yes. they were bills. I'm sure they were, but it's yes. like, she's not in a good space. I'm turning around and leaving. I'm going to go play outside. I don't want to be around mom right now. Yeah. And the key that I've now appreciated looking back is my family lived so close to the razor's edge. They didn't have any discretionary money, right? Dad made, I'm just going to make this up two grand a month. And, but our bills, our fixed bills were 1900. So my family was playing with $100 of discretionary money, oh. which is one flat tire, one hospital visit, you right. know, whatever. And um, too many families do that. So, but I don't think a lot of people think or talk that way. Have you seen, was that common or what, what do you think? Very common. And it still really is, Michael. So, you know, through going through, you know, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University is something that was really life-changing for me. So now, when did you do that? I forget. What year was that for you? I did that um, right after my husband and I got married. So in about the year 2000. Okay. So it was really interesting, Michael, and, and I want to touch on two points here, is that even going through my college education with a business management degree, minor in finance, going through private banking, financial advisory training, I learned all about how to manage big companies you know, ledgers or all about what to do when you had a bunch of money, not a single budgeting class, high school, college, or through investment advisory training, not a single one. Wow. So I could tell you what to do with money if you had a bunch of money, but I didn't really know how to manage my own. I mean, I budgeted fairly okay with a spreadsheet, but my church offered Dave Ramsey's, uh, he came to speak at my church and hmm. we're like, oh my gosh, we had all this debt. So we had made the mistake right away of you know, my husband had a six figure college um, school debt. We got a car and we bought a house mm. and it's like the American Whoops. dream. You get married, you buy a house, you buy a car, you get good jobs. And then you think about retirement later. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I knew this stuff at a high level, but I didn't know how to master day to day to day. So I went through his financial peace university and then I started teaching it at my class. Oh. It's a 14 week course. And for the average American, I remember listening to this, the average American has less than $3,000 saved and they live check to check to check. Doesn't matter what your income level, doesn't matter if you're moderate income, lower income, higher income. Generally speaking, most Americans have spend more money than what they make and they've got debt. 
So in the last time I looked, the average American had like $40,000 of debt, not including school loans, and had $4,000 saved, over 70% of the population. So this isn't just a Michael Zuber's parents when you were younger, this mm -hmm. is still today. So there's still today is this um, lack of people really being able to um, have the patience to live below their means while they work to expand their means because every time you got money, you find, you find bigger toys, you find bigger houses, you find bigger expenses, you buy more expensive cars mm -hmm. and people still haven't gotten it that they're not gonna get ahead if they lose that job, they're in trouble, you know? Yeah. That's really, really important. So yes. while I don't agree with everything Dave Ramsey says for every American, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it, I think every person should go through his training or something like it to learn just basic money mastery. And one of the things that he said that was really impactful to me, even if I don't remember all the, the details of, of every lesson was that, um, patience is the ability to delay gratification. And so it's like delayed gratification is what's going to really allow you to move forward and to grow financially because you learn the difference between what you need and what you want. And so we learned to, to figure out what we needed and allocate all the money to our needs and give ourselves a very limited amount for what we want while we paid down the debt until mm -hmm. we were able to then work on expanding our means at the same time. So he doesn't talk much about expanding the means. And that's where real estate really came in and, and then took everything I learned and the foundation of budgeting and money mastery to the next level. Yeah. Awesome. Cause that's, that's probably where I'm going to be pushing pretty hard for the next six to nine months. I want to elevate the discussion. I want to demystify the word budgeting equal constraint yeah. or negativity. Uh, I also have a particular passion of parents talking money with kids. So I'm oh, curious yeah. in your fan, maybe it's playing cash flow for kids, which I think you've mentioned before. You, I believe parents, A, need to talk amongst themselves. So if you're not doing that, start there. <laughs> but if you are having that conversation, I believe maybe once kids get to be 10, 11, 12, you need to at least have the conversation. Hey, mom and dad make X, you know, obviously don't share this. Mom and dad make X. This is what we paid to live here. This is what we pay for your school. This is what we pay here. Because one of the things that I never appreciated until like a month ago was how close my family grew up close to the razor's edge. I knew stress, but I didn't know why until I kind of did the math and I built a pie chart. I'm like, no kidding. It was stressful. They 98% of the money was committed before the month started. A hundred percent. So is that a big thing in your family? Do you talk to your kids about money and all of that? We do all the time, awesome. all the time. And you know, my youngest, my oldest kids, remember my oldest son remembers when we lived in a little one bedroom uh, two bedroom apartment with four of us and mm -hmm. then had the third baby he remembers what that was like and you know when i share my story and he's read in my book we talk about how tight it was when we first moved to central pennsylvania after we sold everything in texas we had done the budgeting thing we went through we paid off all our debt um and we moved to pa and started over but then the financial crisis happened. So, mm. you know, we lived check to check to check thinking I was going to lose my job and my husband had a brand new business. So he wasn't bringing in any money at that point. And it was so tight. And, um, you know, we didn't have big Christmases and we didn't go shopping and we shopped down at the local thrift store. And, you know, we made sacrifices to make sure that we weren't, you know, living above our means. And then they've seen kind of the moves to the, the <laughs> next bigger rental house and then the next bigger house and then the next bigger house. And they ask questions all the time. Like, why can't we just go buy this? You have the money. You, you, you're a, you know, my, my little guy likes to go, you're a millionaire. You can buy whatever you want. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm maybe we, I'm a millionaire. Yeah, well, You just sit down and have not. a discussion. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You're not. And the way that we, the way that we developed what we have was that we were very careful with money and you yeah. have to realize yeah. you can't have everything you want, or we would all spend everything and we would be, we would be broke. And so yeah. you have to learn and make choices about the things that are really important to you that you really want to own. And then you have to save for it. And so we talk to them about, you know, and, and this is just being transparent about money. So like yeah. years ago, my kids got $75 for Christmas. I have yep. four of them. So that was 300 bucks. Then they got a hundred, then they got to, you know, 150 this year, I'm giving them $200 a piece. That's it. Mm -hmm. And one electronic device, one hoverboard is almost the $200. 
but you know, mom, why can't you just add this and add this? I'm like, no, nope, we have a budget and this mm. is what you get. And if you want more, you can start saving for the difference. And you know that I'll give you $200 a Christmas that you can put toward this. Otherwise, anything you want above that, you have to earn it. And so mm. I don't give my kids allowance. I pay them commissions if they do jobs that are outside of their responsibility, their daily ah, responsibility. Nice. So you can, you can, you can, you clean your room, you do your own laundry, one does dishes, one mows the grass. We don't pay them for that. That's their job and yeah. their contribution. That's, that's to live in the house. That's their base pay. You yeah. know, that's their draw. <laughs> and then if they want a commission and they want extra money, they have to do other things that we need them to help us with. And that's nice. where they earn money. And we don't let them spend it all. They've got to save a small piece of it and then they can save up. And so they each have a list of how much money they've earned nice. and what they have in their bucket. I don't have separate bank accounts for them, quite frankly, because it's just too much trouble for me to have to go to the bank all the time. <laughs> exactly. So my oldest one does and I transfer money. So I'm like, okay, you've earned this much. I transfer money in the account. And so just things like that, it's just the basic conversations. They don't understand budgeting you know, fully, but they understand the difference between needs and wants. Yep. That mommy's really not giving in just because we have money doesn't mean they get it. And we've told them we could lose everything. Yeah. Here's the reality. We're trying to set up ourselves wisely, but in economic crisis, crises, people win and lose. And, mm -hmm. and I have tried to teach them the value of contentment more than anything. Be content in what you have. Be grateful for what you have because you have much more than what you realize, you know, yeah. um, and not always chasing things to bring joy. More things, things that money can buy is what we rely on for joy. No, I don't want them to learn that. I want to learn contentment comes with our family and spending time together. And there's many things we can do for free or for very inexpensive that can bring joy so that they're not constantly living in that. My friends have this. I have to have this. Hmm. You know, right now it's the phone. My, my 12, my 11 year old, I want an iPhone six. All my friends have iPhone sixes. I'm like, you're not getting a phone till you're 17 and driving a car. And that's it. End of discussion. Not yeah. happening. Next. Oh, why? You know, and it's because you don't need it. Why yeah. do you need to text your 11 year old friends when you've seen them all day? Yeah. And, you know, you don't need it. So just trying to teach the difference between needs and wants, patience, contentment, um, and, and not frivolously spending is, is what we kind of try to drill in them over and over in different ways. Yeah, this is going to be a big thing. Again, I, I see too many adults that think budgeting is bad and it maybe it's just yeah. that maybe elevating the conversation to just money mastery as you've kind of put it out there is the way to go um yeah this is this is going to be something i keep pushing on i'm i'm, I'm playing with because again a adults need to do it it's the only way the only way financial freedom starts is to know where you are otherwise you're just wandering yeah. in the woods and then right. i have a particular passion about helping the next generation so uh, helping kids it's pretty important a hundred percent and the thing is michael if you can't learn to master your own money it is even harder when you start buying rental property <laughs> like you should have a budget for every single property that you own yeah. and for me because i i already lived by excel like i built a, a master spreadsheet that's like a snapshot and then that's a ledger for my own personal stuff and every single property has its own ledger yeah, as yeah. it's here's the budget here's the expenses to the point that while i use quickbooks for example i've started to move over to it because everyone yeah. say i just said i should i still have right now a parallel on excel and what i like about being able to excel is i literally make a budget based on the following year so like or last year so 2019 i had line item by line item here was you know at the beginning of the month is the rents I have the mortgage and then the insurance and then the taxes and it's in order of how much it was and when it comes out. I clone it for 2020 yep. and I'll clone it for 2021 to know that this is where my budget was last year and how I spent. What do I need to tweak? And then I make sure that everything is built to where I end up with the, the, the amount of money I need at the end of the year, but I can see month by month the mm -hmm. entire year laid out. Nice. And if I spent more this month on repairs, I better spend less this month on repairs. And so I could not do what I do if I weren't that meticulous with every single property and making sure I'm managing the inflows, managing the outflows and not just taking owner draws anytime I want to go out and take a fancy vacation. Like, nope, I get $1,000 a month from this property. I get $2,000 a month from this property and I don't take any more out of it. And go. so it's mastering the money and the budgeting 
is really one of the most important things that I do day to day that's allowed me to go from where I was to where I am today, 100%. Well, with that, I think that's how we're going to leave this one. That is a very powerful closing statement, Anna. Thank you very much again for giving us some time on Friday and you enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too, Michael. I will. Thank you.